Neonic Void Productions presents. in front of me and i am ready to go have you looked into the exterminators or are you going in blind i am going in blind because i have not lovely you're gonna have a fun time because this shit is again insanity and buffoonery it's grindhouse as finest oh wow as they put in the beginning of the book it says and i quote the following issue is recommended for mature on on uh, mature audiences only. It contains crude humor, alcohol usage, parental nud- partial nudity, strobe effects, violence, and some of your favorite mutants acting like absolute dumbasses. Reader discretion is advised. <laughs> it's literally the first page. It's so great. <laughs> I love this five issue miniseries. It's so good. First shot, first panel you see is Dazzler's ass. Oh. Dazzler's ass as she's rollerblading and blood of vampires she are she is butchering with her light powers. Hi, welcome to Book Watchers. Welcome back to Book Watchers. <laughs> I am one of your host, Devon. And today I'm joined with the one and only, the tall giant himself. Jacob. Hi, Jacob. Yellow. Hello. Yellow. Hi. Yellow. The color yellow, the color blue, the color red, all the primary colors. Yes. Hi, how are you doing? Let's get. So Let's today's get. episode is the last episode we're doing for the month of October. To end the month Ooh. of vampires. Woo. Woo. Will this be the last story we do of vampires? No, but this is just for now with vampires. It's the last one. <laughs> For October. So happy Halloween if you're listening to this on Halloween. Woo! My favorite holiday or my favorite time of year because Halloween and Christmas are my faves. Thanksgiving is great for food. So, yeah. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I love fucking Christmas. Ugh. Y'all are gonna get spoiled this Christmas. All my friends, y'all are gonna be spoiled this Christmas. Trust. Stuff is happening. Stuff is I, y'all gonna be spoiled. It's gonna be a good Christmas for you, for everybody, <laughs> everybody in my life. Um, so today, not getting into Christmas, which there are Christmas stories. So look forward to that because there could be Christmas stories we are going to do for December. But that's not we're not in December. We're in October. So uh, today we are going back to the world of comic books. And again, for like last week, I'm taking the reins. Doesn't happen that often, but when it do, you know it's going to be campy. Last week we did Carmella and her problematic lesbian camp ass. Love her. Today we're going back to the mutants, to the X-Men. Now, if you've been listening or watching on YouTube about this podcast, we started doing episodes or Started pre-recording episodes again, and the first thing we did was House of X, Powers of Ten. So, we're going back to the mutants. We're going back to the X-Men. We're going to be following a group of female X-Men that are in a group called the Exterminators. Now, this is a five-issue miniseries back in the era of Destiny of X. And honestly, this is some of the best X-Men stories. Like one of my favorite X-Men stories I've ever read. It's so good. If you have not read The Exterminators, please do yourself a fucking favor and fucking read it. The artwork is fantastic. The humor is amazing. The writing, Leo Williams, you are everything. You're a queen icon. I love you. And I love that you gave us Tesler as a vampire hunter. It's so good. So to get into it now, let me pull out my notes that I've written down before I pull out the book. 
itself and go through page to page what happens. Well, not page to page, but like, you know what I mean. So, this book, the main heroes of said book are as follows. Jubilee, which everyone knows Jubilee. Then you got Dazzler, Boom Boom, and Wolverine. Not Hank. Um, not Hank. Uh, not Logan Wolverine. Laura. Kenny Wolverine. Now. X-23. X-23. Well, she doesn't go by X-23 anymore. But yes, once upon a time, X-23. So let me pull up the mutants because I am going to go over some of their um, these particular mutants like power sets so you can kind of get a visual of what I'm talking about. A little background on them, on the, on the members of the group. So you got Jubilee, which is Jubilation Lee. She is a mutant, of course. She is. She's also a fun fact once for this type of, for the story. Now her power set, she can make fireworks. She has lumen. Lumi kinetic explosive light blasting, which basically means she can make fireworks and she can make uh, shields with these as well. And she does have a new, um, she does use an, a new, a new attack or blast that she can utilize her powers for in this story, but I'm not going to spoil it too much because that, she makes it known that she can do this with her powers, but that's towards the end of the story. So we'll get into it when we get across that. So she can make like fireworks and light and little blasts and effect and stuff of that nature. So that's her power set. Then you got Dazzler, which is Allison Blair. She can manipulate light or turn. Sorry. She can manipulate light, but she can also create light from sound. Dazzler is a disco queen. She makes music and she sings. She can turn like their music and singing to light that she can manipulate and blast her as she sees fit. So she is a power hitter. There's also a whole storyline of her being able to die and come back from the dead, which she has done a few times. But they never addressed that. So she's technically immortal. Air quotes. But she's great. She's one of my favorite mutants as well. She can use light in a different way by manipulating sound like um, unlike Jubilee. Then we got Boom Boom. Have you heard of Boom Boom? Pick up. She, yes. She's, doesn't she make like little beads that can explode? She makes little time bombs, yes. She creates balls of plasma, which she can set off and just explode. And she's also kind of a, um, she's a bimbo, but like in the best way possible. Yeah. Love, love Tabitha Smith. And then of course you got Wolverine, Laura Kinney, which she pops in halfway through the story and she's the female Wolverine. And she's great. So to get into this story, now this story does not take, does not affect any of the other X-Men stories of this line. Um, it kind of happens in its own little bubble over the course of one night. Uh, now, as I was telling Jacob before, and I'm sure I, I might have it in the episode, but if I don't, when I open up this book, there's a warning that says this is for mature audiences only. It contains crude humor, alcohol usage, partial nudity, strobe effects, violence, and some of your favorite mutants acting like absolute dumbasses. Your discretion is advised. Uh, this story is marketed as a grind. Enter the Grindhouse of X. So you know those Grindhouse films that, um, like Planet Terror or Death Proof, or is it just those two? There's a bunch of other films like Texas Chainsaw Massacre is considered a Grindhouse film. This is a Grindhouse X-Men comic book. It's gory, it's funny, and it's campy as hell. And it's one of my personal favorites. I absolutely love it, and I'll always tell good about this book. If someone wants a good entry point into the X-Men or the mutants as a whole, 
I will hand them this bug mug. Read it. You're going to love it. It's going to be great. So the mo- this movie, huh, movie. Um, first panel you see when the story starts, is you see Dazzler's ass, Allison's ass, and she's skating around chewing bubble gum and skating in blood as she is destroying mutants. Um, not mutants, destroying vampires with her light powers. And she's just skating around roller skates, acting like a boss. Right. Mm-hmm. Now we jump back. Cause this story throughout the whole story, she is, she and the other girls are all talking to the council, the quiet council of Krakoa as they're being um, tried by them. And they're explaining this whole story as it happens. So we'll be jumping back and forth between the story that's happening as well as them talking to the quiet council about what happened. So it kind of jumps back and forth, but the story starts off with Dazzler or Allison breaking up. Uh, She is throwing his stuff out of the apartment. She's destroying his record collection and she is really ripping him a new one because he cheated on her. And she's like, no, fuck your shit. Get the fuck out of this house. You're done here. She destroys all his records and kicks him out. Then she calls up um, Jubilee and she basically says, hey, I need a girl's night. I broke up my boyfriend. I need a girl's night. So Jubilee gets her, boom, boom, and they meet up with Dazzler at a bar. Now, the bar's name is Mr. B's Bar. A karaoke night, uh, they have a whole flyer on it on the page. It's like, Mr. B's Bar, karaoke night, Wednesdays, ladies, drink free, 7 p.m. Now, they all come up to this bar. Now, everyone is wearing pretty normal clothing except for Boom Boom. Boom Boom is walking in with a short, short mini dress that has hearts all over it. Her tits are out, and she's wearing big old pigtails, high-platform shoes, stockings that go up to the knee, and pigtails. Did I say pigtails? Oh, and heart-shaped glasses. Heart-shaped pink glasses. She's looking like a straight up bimbo and she's working it, honey. She is serving and I ate and we continue to work. Oh, love it. Yeah. Boom, boom walks in. She's like, you dumb bitches. <laughs> Some of these lines are great, but they're on the bar drinking and having fun and they're dancing to music. And then they start feeling weird and boom, boom. Tabitha passes out first. And they're like, what's going on? And they see Alex. Allison, a.k.a. Dazzler's ex-boyfriend. Turns out he's a vampire. And oh, no. they're like, what? Right? Right? Oh, it gets worse. There's some tea with Alex. Oh. So Alex turns out he's a vampire. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing? And they got drugged. And then they pass out. And then... They wake up. Well, of course, they pass out, but like they start beating their ass. uh, Boom Boom's out for the count, but Jubilee and Dazzler try their hardest to fight off the vampires. And Dazzler uses, obviously, these are two mutants that use light as a power, and that's not good for vampires. So they get the shit beat out of them a little bit, and they do eventually do pass out. And then we jump to Tabitha, Boom Boom, she wakes up on this wooden le- bridge ledge, a piece of wood floating in this murky green water as she is then grabbed by this vampiric shark beast thing and starts attacking her. And then she throws a plasma ball into this creature's mouth and it explodes and the head explodes blood splattering everywhere. And they're like, what the fuck? And she's amongst this floating swamp, like, place on this block of wood as these other shark like abominations are tailing her and she's fighting them off. Then we jump to Jubilee. She's on a monster truck. She's driving a monster truck as she's running away from other monster trucks that are monsters. Fun, right? Monster truck rally. Hey, as these other monsters and creatures and people are driving these monster trucks and their goal is to try to kill her. So she is like busting a hole in the ground and shit. And she's trying to drive around for her state, trying to save her dear life. And then we jump to Dazzler and Dazzler is in this maze of, she's in a dark pitch black place. And she's in this 
maze that's like never ending. As she's walking around, she's trying to use her light to guide her way, but she does alert these vampiric, I don't know if they're vampire, but the, these monsters are tailing her. And it's because she's using her light to try and see, so they're able to find her. And then she drives, she runs around and she's trying to, she finds this poor little creature in a cage that she, that she lets out. And she's like, we're going to get out of here together. Let's both get the hell out of here. And during all this, as she's getting this little creature out of the cage, um, we jump back to Boom Boom as she is wrecking these monsters' asses. She's blowing heads. She's blowing these swamp creatures to pieces as she's getting, like, covered in blood and shit. And um, she's so basically kind of come back to her as she's handling that problem. Then Jubilee busts into the room on her uh, monster truck. And she basically drives over and she picks up uh, Boom Boom. And Boo Boom, again, is drenched, dripping with blood of these monsters that she was blowing up. As a horde of them are traveling, running after Boom Boom. She gets on the monster truck, and between Boom Boom and Jubilee, they're, like, taking out these monsters, blowing shit up with fireworks or her plasma bombs. And then we jump back to um, Dazzler. As Dazzler has this poor little baby creature and she is running around trying to get away from these horde of green monsters. And she has the baby and she's like, I'm sorry about this. And she just throws the baby in the air. She's like, well, oh, well, she's like, I'm going to toss this baby, Ugh. toss this little creature out. And that's when, um, boom, boom and Jubilee crash into the maze. So you're kind of getting the idea that there are multiple rooms in this place and they're all big rooms and they have different little obstacle, uh, uh, different creatures, monsters and all that stuff. And they're like, what the hell is going on here? So they're driving around on a goddamn monster truck going through the maze and they see Dazzler Allison shine her light and shit as they're crashing through the maze. Like the walls are nothing crushing through them. And then boom, boom, makes this very large, almost like a sun, an atomic bomb that she just throws out and explodes and kills a bunch of these monsters as blood and guts are flying everywhere. And they pick up Allison. And I get in, loser, we're going to therapy. That was said by Jubilee. And I want that tattooed on me. I want a tattoo of that. Because that's that. There's a lot of iconic panels in this story. And that is one of them. Like Dazzler is on a, on a pile of these monsters, corpses, as she's covered in blood. And then Jubilee just drives up. It's like, getting, getting loose. We're going to therapy. And um, Dazzler catches the beast. She threw him up in the air to handle the situation. And then she catches it. And they all get into the monster truck. Then they're going. They're trailing. They're trailing through the maze, trying to find, trying to find a goddamn exit. Like, what the fuck is going on here? And when they finally do stop, um, you get a scene of Boom Boom throwing up her, throwing up what she drank earlier, because uh, they were driving around like they were crazy. And then, when they're surrounded, they're like, "We're surrounded by something. Someone's coming." And you find out it's Wolverine. Laura Kinney shows up at this location. You're just like, what? How'd you get here? Because they, they realize they're in some other place that they were drugged by the vampire, by Alex. And they're like, how'd you get here? And Lauren's like, oh, hi. I've been here for like two days. I was drugged too. They ambushed me and they brought me here like two days ago. And they're all like, what the fuck? What the fuck's going on here? So Laura joins them. The artwork in this book is just chef's kiss. So good. And then we jump to the quiet council where they're in the middle of the tables of the quiet council in front of the quiet council. And they're all explaining the story. And Xavier's like, um, Tabitha, I've already explained this. It's not a trial. And cause they, they're like, explain what happened. But they're all like, Oh, we're putting on trial. And Xavier's like, you're not on trial though. And it's like, now it's like, could have fooled me. 
they feel like they have to plead their case when reality, because they're restrained right now in front of the county council. So they're like, uh, if we're not on trial, then why are we in this predicament like this? And apparently there was a, uh, Emma chimes in and Emma tells them, well, you're, the stuff that you did caused the war to break out within the vampire nation. No less. So this is why you are set before us and you have to explain yourself because you start a war within the vampire, the world of vampires on earth. And you're just like, what? <laughs> and here's like, what's going on here? And of course they're in costumes, by the way, Allison's in a cheerleader costume, Jubilee's in like a schoolgirl costume from like a Japanese anime. Um, fucking Laura uh, is in a witch costume and Boom Boom is in like a clown girl costume. It's fucking weird. And you don't get an explanation on why they're in these costumes right now. But you will soon. Any questions or concerns before I continue, Jacob? No, please do carry on. Oh, lovely. So we jump back to the story at hand as they're explaining it. And they notice that there's an audience of people watching them from these stands out in the distance there's just a bunch of vampires they're like what the fuck we got an audience cool whatever then there's a lot of interaction and then trying to figure out what the hell is going on blah 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 and then they see then we jump to um people watching these girls on screen on a screen and you see that's alex and a bunch of these high level vampires and you find out a little about alex turns out alex is the grandson to Dracula in the Marvel universe. That's going to cause problems. Ooh. His father is Exorus, which is the son of Dracula. So he is in right direct relation to Dracula and his line. And for whatever reason, he's doing all this shit. And I'm sure you come to find out that uh, the vampires don't see this too kindly because he's causing Alex or Allah, Al Hex is causing a lot of turmoil amongst the vampires as well as Krakoa and other races, the Fae, and etc. So, from there, he's having an altercation with his father, um, Exorus, and basically the altercation is basically his father telling Alex, quit playing with your fucking food, take care of the problem. And his father's getting real impatient with him and starts slamming him around. And Alex is like, we got a plan. It's fine. Everything's going to work out. And the girls are um, then bombarded with uh, fucking mirrors that shoot out of the ground that make another, like, another little maze. And one of the mirrors comes up and cuts off Laura's arm. Laura loses an arm, apparently. And the crowd roars with anticipation. And they're put into this like this weird cubicle situation with glass and mirrors as Laura's again, lost an arm, mind you. <laughs> and of course, Laura is a healer, so she can, uh, I can't remember if she can go back. back her arm or if they put the arm back, it'll reattach. But the point is she's, she'll be fine in no time because they're a healing factor like Logan's. Cause if you didn't know, she's a clone of Logan. Clone slash daughter. It's the whole thing there. But this is, if you want a episode on Laura, go listen to the House of Ideas, which is another podcast on comic book characters. And I did a whole episode on Laura. Kenny. No. I did an episode on one of the other characters. Um, another character connected to Laura, but we got a little backstory on Laura. But nonetheless, that will be in the description below if you want to listen to that. So if you want more information on Laura. Now. Uh, back to the story, they're in this mirror place as these copies, mirror images of them start coming out of these glass panes and walls, and they start fighting each other or fighting themselves. There's like hundreds of these copies of them, mirror images of them as they're kicking each other's ass and shit, and getting their ass beat. They can't take them all out. So they get the idea that because every time they look in the mirror, a reflection comes out of said mirror. So they're like, okay, cool. We got to blind ourselves. So they take pieces of their clothing and they make blindfolds out of them. Because if they're not looking at the mirrors, no reflections, no more reflections will come out. 
So, um, let me double check that actually. Yeah, they have to blind themselves to hide from the um, double gangers because they're not getting a headway for finding them. So, from there, we jump back to Alex, who is using a fae. He's using a certain type of fairy that is nothing more than a big piece of glass and diamond that can reflect, make double gangers and shit. So, that he's using this thing, this poor fae as a pawn to make those double gangers. And you come to find out that the, um, might as well spoil it now. The place they are at is a fey construct. So there's a bunch of fey and other creatures trapped here in this little fortress place. And Alex is not doing stuff necessarily of his own volition. He is working for somebody who do we know in the Marvel universe that likes to collect monsters and shit? Ah, uh, gee, I wonder who put a pen in that. Cause you're probably right. If you guessed, so we jump to Alex as him and a bunch of other vampires decide to join in the fray. Now, let me tell you this artwork in this book is fabulous. And you get a group of vampires. Um, he puts on a suit of armor. You got two female vampires that look just so good. I want a whole book zeroed in around them. And then you get a third one, another male who is decked out in these pointy spiky armor with long white hair. And I'm just like, can I get a book on these guys? Cause this looks like, this looks lit. Uh, so they basically join in the fray to try to take out Dazzler and them themselves. Uh, as they're taking out the mirrors, they are then get bitten by these vampires. They start biting them, slashing them, cutting them, and whatever else. And then that's when they notice that they're not alone here. There's other vampires and shit. Then we jump back to the Quiet Council as they continue on um, kind of chime in with them and get the opinions from the quiet council on what's happening. Xavier is very um, uncomfortable with uh, this story and how it's playing out and the way they're dressed and shit. He's kind of uncomfy. Uh, we get some interaction between them as well as we see the Fae that came along with them. So when Dazzler and the rest of the group came back, they brought a bunch of the Fae with them because a bunch of Fae were trapped on this structure. And they're like, what are we going to do with the Fae? Then we jump back to the issue at hand. Um, Alex is talking to the Fae, the, this glass. Um, this Fae made a glass, and he's trying to find a way to handle the problem because Dazzler and them are all taking, they're killing bitches and taking names. Then they start fighting. They realized about the vampires and they start fighting them. Boom, boom. Love her. She takes one of the plasma plasma bombs and shoves it down one of the vampires throats and the vampires head explodes like a zit. So he force, she force feeds him a bomb and it's, it's great. It's great. Vampires. Got, the vampires got checked. Very grand house. Oh, very grindhouse. Uh, they all get their they all get their asses beat by like Wolverine because Wolverine slashes her claw her fist through one of the vampires' chests like straight up. Uh, like there's a big old gaping hole in a vampire now, and the crowd is going wild for the destruction and death of everything. And Dazzler gets an idea. She's hearing sound. Now, what do we know about Dazzler? She uses sound and converts it into light she can use to fuck shit up so she gets the crowd crowd rolling she's like who's having she yells out to the crowd who's having a good time tonight and the crowds woo and she's like i can't hear you and the crowd gets crazier and with that her powers ignite like a bomb of light and she fucks the vampires up with uh the with the light that she's converting from the sound of the crowd then when she takes out the vampires, she finds an exit. They get the hell out of there. Or they try to find a get the hell. They try to find a way to get out of there. They're like, wait a minute. Cool, we're in a we're in a place of glass. What can we do to get out of here? Boom boom gets an idea. 
or boom, boom is used as the, um, as the ploy to break the glass. So she, <laughs> they do a countdown from three to one for her to send out some explosives to blast a hole in the glass structure. What, how she does this, how do you, how does she do this? You may ask. Well, she undoes her top and she lets out her girls, her boobs. When she drops the top and her boobs are revealed, two bombs immerse from her boobs, blast out of her tits. And she, because you get this great shot of her top flying around everywhere and, she, and her tit, and there's these big explosions that are coming out of her boobs and she blasts a hole in this glass structure as she is like making an exit way for them. Almost like a nuke. It's great. Ooh. It's great. Wow. My description of this is not doing this justice. You have to look it out for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. I've never seen bombs pop out of hits like that. It's almost as extreme as in Planet Terror, where a girl takes a machine gun, attaches it to her leg, because she's missing a leg. And that's great, too. I love Grindhouse. So, they're shattering glass, and, they're, and they finally got their way out of there, and of course the glass is flying out into the crowd of vampires watching, and they're really just, at this point, fucking shit up on these vampires. Then they find the fae, the fae that was controlling, that Alex was controlling, that is made of glass, and they release him accordingly. And Alex is like, well, shit, we're fucked. And then we see the girls get taken up to this um, structure. And you come to find out that Alex is working for somebody. Working for somebody that, because he promised this person entertainment. Who is this person that he is working for? Oh, nothing more than the collector. And if you, know, if you watch any of the MCU films, you know about the collector. With his whole ass. So the collector is a person, an uh, alien elder of the universe, who loves to collect things. Started off with little trinkets, artifacts, and then turned into alien species. He loves to collect everything. And this whole structure, fae like structure, is built so he can watch Alex make these hunger style game events with these creatures and these aliens that the collector has collected over the years what to watch them fight for his own entertainment that's fucked up but let them fight, let them fight to the death but you know as we know about the collector that's that's in his bandwagon that's right up his alley that seems like something he would do so when i found out mm -hmm. so when i first saw this that alex was working with collector i'm like i'm not surprised that sounds about right so uh from there the girls break into this facility and they see a bunch of these other um, women, these other characters uh, that the collector has gathered over the years. And they're all in different Halloween costumes and shit. And that's where they get the idea of changing into these costumes that they're wearing when they're presented by the, presented to the quiet council, all these Halloween costumes and shit. Cause all these, all these alien women are wearing like cat suits or sailor uniforms, cowboy uniforms, fucking a chicken suit, Captain America, Spider-Man, like you name it, they're wearing it. So they find some extra clothes because their stuff is covered in blood. And basically when they see Alex, they're like, you're going to wish he never did this. We're going to find you. We're going to fuck you up. And he's like, cause you kidnapped us. You took us against our will to here. Yeah, no, we're going to fuck you up. So, then Allison and Alex get into an argument because Alex got dumped and he didn't like that he got dumped. So he did all this because he doesn't like getting dumped. And Allison's like, her dad was like, you cheated on me. What the fuck do you think I was going to do? And Alex is basically doing all this to get revenge. Now, Alex is wearing an amulet around his neck. This amulet um, makes, it, makes him able to stand out in sunlight. Now, to get more information on said amulet, uh, let me find the Sunlight Pendant. The Sunlight Pendant is a pendant that was created by a sector of vampires, enabling vampires to walk in the daylight and begin to and attempt to take over the world. That's what they were initially used for. 
So he was able to stand out in sunlight because he has one of these amulets. That was obviously probably given to him either by his father or his grandfather. Now, Dazzler makes it apparent that she's going to get out of here and I'm going to fuck you up. And he's like, nah, nah, that's not going to happen because I'm working with the collector. Y'all fucked. Y'all stuck here. Y'all are just going to be little chess pieces to his little fucked up game. And they're like, no, no, we're not. So they get their change of their clothes and they do find a way out of said facility by with the help of the Fae. They travel around the facility, gathering all the Fae and shit they can, and they find exit. And when they get the exit, they end up right in the middle of Krakoa. Right in the middle of a baseball softball game. And everyone's like either shirtless or wearing skimpy outfits and shit. Like you get a shot of um, Gambit shirtless. And let me tell you, it's quite nice. Whoever drew this game, I don't know. Well, see who drew who was the artist for this carlos gomez thank you for contributing to the shirtlessness of gambit and his apps and giving us a uh, rogue and her daisy dukes thank you thank you you should get an oscar for that and emma is sitting there with the um Stafford cuckoos and they're wearing sunglasses enjoying the show because they're like we're not going to get involved in physical activity you crazy I'm Emma fucking Frost. I don't do physical activity. And then, of course, the, all the Fae and the four and the mutants all just fall out of the sky. And they're like, what the fuck is this? And then that's where they're brought before the council to explain what the fuck is happening here. Because this is questionable. Then. Dracula shows up. On Krakoa. Dracula, the vampire king himself. Shows up at their not trial. And he basically says. Hi, Dracula. So Dracula shows up and he talks to kind of approaches the group. And I'm trying to find, so I basically said they're all traitors. So all the vampires that were there at that facility are basically all traitors and they had bounties on them and they're basically kind of tyrants. And so he's not there to be like, Oh, you killed that. You killed my kind. I'm going to punish you. Nah, he wants to find his grandson because his grandson is wanted. Al Hex, son of Axorus, grandson of Dracula, is hereby excommunicated from the vampire nation. He is wanted by his grandfather. And his grandfather intends to drag his ass back home to be handled accordingly. But Dazzler's like, nah, 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 nah. You owe me. I fucking went through all this shit because of your fucking grandson. And he did some uh, very questionable shit. And I was like, you fucking owe me. You owe me a boon. And Dracula's like, a boon for money? It's like, nah, I don't want money. Nah. He's like, I want the boon. Uh, but he's like, oh, a boon, you say? You have, you, yes, I have a favor to ask of you. Well, child, what is it? I want dibs, is what Dazzler says. He's like, dibs. So we jump to Alex flirting with another girl in the bar that they were at the beginning, right? And then Dazzler and a bunch of these other women, these other fae, come walking up. And it turns out the divs that she was wanting, she wanted to take care of Alex before Dracula guys grabbing little hands on him. She's like, I want to deal with him first. I want first dibs. Then you could pick up the rest if he survives. Dracula agrees. And the Fae all get basically brought to Captain uh, Britain, which is uh, Betsy Braddock and her girlfriend, Rachel. Lesbians. If you haven't, if you haven't not read the Excalibur series for the uh, X-Men run, new X-Men run, please do so. It's so good. It really is. Other world. Oh, it's so good. I love it. 
And I love Betsy. And she's a lesbian with Rachel Summers. Oh, so good. Love it. So all the fake get brought over to Betsy and Rachel. And they're like, well, we're going to bring you all back to basically, well, we could take you all back to other world. And then from there, we jump to the bar again. that We left off on the last issue. This is the last issue, issue five. Dazzler and Munchie's other women come into the bar. And Alex is like, oh, what are you doing here? And Dazzler looks over to these two female vampire bartenders. And she's like, my problem's not with you. You were just hired goons for Alex. You're free to go. And these two vampire uh, vampires, like, they piece the fuck. They're like, huh, not our problem. So they fucking pack up their shit and they leave. And Dazzler is like, yeah, um, you're trespassing on uh, my property. And he's like, what? Uh oh. Bar and we're day. And he's like, what? And she's like, yeah, we're here on demolition day and you're in the way. So we're going to fuck you up. So he's going around. Dazzler and these women are destroying the bar and attacking Alex. And Dazzler's like, um, what's wrong, babe? So good. Then we jump to Wolverine beating the shit out of the collector like kick to the face claws like full on just beating the shell of the collector and then the collector becomes a this cosmic alien thing i mean because the collector's an alien he's not a human y'all he's like my turn then we jump back to the bar where alex is getting his shit kicked out of him it's so great because this oh so a pan picture he's running in the darkness right and he's surrounded by pitch black darkness in the, of the, not, the dark of the night. And he's like, what? And then he sees a crystal ball with a bunch of lights flashing around. And then Dazzler appears behind him with a creepy face. She's like, ha, boo. Because Dazzler is his worst fucking nightmare. She catches up. Dazzler catches up to him and starts beating the shit out of him. Then we jump back to the collector and, uh, the, and Wolverine as they're fighting. The collector is now this kaiju level alien as uh they are fighting oh let's see do, 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 do. basically he she makes it where makes it easier for the other creatures to get the hell out um and turn up, destroy your own ship so basically the she basically got the collector to destroy his own ship and then she hightails it out of there she teleports out of that ship back to earth and then we jump to these aliens that come through with a teleportation as Dazzler is lighting up like a goddamn disco ball. Light is flashing everywhere and she becomes pure light at this point. And she is beating the shit out of Alex. She's raising, she's doing the whole air splits. She puts her foot up with roller skates straight up in the air and slams down his skull and Beats his goddamn ass as she destroys these monsters and fucking skates around in blood and guts of her enemies. And then we go back to Jubilee and Boom Boom as they're helping fight off the Collector. Jubilee gets an idea. And this is where the new ability comes in with Jubilee. She becomes an atomic bomb. She lights up like a Christmas tree and she explodes at the on the ship and she blows up the ship and she comes crashing down to Earth. But she approached magic before doing this. She asked magic to do something. And she's basically telling her she's fighting all these monsters or they're going to be fighting all these monsters. Uh, We found this down in a a fighting pit when we were trapped. Imagine being abandoned in hell, defenseless, young, alone. And Dazzler's like, that's and not Dazzler. Magic's like, that's enough. I'm in. And she basically um, gets a hold of Jubilee when she's crashing down to earth. Now, when she decides to become nuclear and atomic bomb herself. Jubilee comes back and she's hairless. She has no hair on her head, no eyebrows, no nothing. She's just a nude body. And she gets all her clothes and she's just now sitting in a bar 
bald. And we leave off with the girls as Magic is taking the baby demon that Dazzler saved earlier. She's taking the demon back to Limbo. Or the little beastie, as Magic put it. So she takes the little beastie back to Limbo with her. And we're left with the three with the four girls, Boom Boom, Dazzler, Jubilee, and now Wolverine in the bar. And they're like, huh, what are we gonna do now? And we jump to this one little panel of Wolverine going. It's beer o'clock, sluts. I laughed a little too hard at that at that little panel right there. And then they spend the night drinking. And that is based to the end of the book. But yeah, all that happened after the whole interaction with the Quiet Council. And then whatever's left, Dracula can get his hands on. And that is the five-issue miniseries known as The Exterminators. And honestly, one of my favorite X-Men comics ever because it's so fucking good. You get a little glimpse at the vampires of Earth Marvel 616, which Dracula does have a history of, um, a history in the Marvel Universe. He has his own little miniseries and shit from the Tomb of Dracula, from like the 70s and 80s and shit. So I've been slowly getting through that run of Dracula because I kind of want to see how Dracula fits in the world of Marvel. So that's my been my own personal journey. But this, this is good. Yeah, that's the story of the Exterminators. Any questions or concerns? <laughs> Comments, Jacob? Very grindhouse. Oh, so good. We went from vampire hunting to aliens to alien kaiju. Just like, it's all over the place. And then Dracula appeared on Krakoa and then Dazzler being like, I want, I want your fucking son, grandson's head on a silver platter. I want dibs. I get first dibs. Cause that's the bitch. I'm going to beat his ass. And she does. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna get him. But yeah, vampires in, in the world of Marvel is very interesting. And especially since like uh Jubilee was a vampire for a while, for quite a while. For those of you who didn't know. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Now, there is no movie of this book or series, animated series, which, God, I wish there was. This is so good. The closest thing I could say to a movie anywhere close to Exterminators is the Blade, mo- the Blade uh, movie that's coming out soon, within the next year or two. More from the MCU, which I'm real excited for because I love vampires in the Marvel universe. It's so good. There's a whole like nation of them, whole hierarchy and the way rules that they live by, set up by Dracula and shit. It's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. Man, there's so many Marvel movies. Well, okay, there's only one uh, Marvel movie coming out at the end of the, uh, towards the end of the year, and that's the, the Marvels. Marvel. I'm excited for that one too. I'm excited to see more of Photon. I love her. See what? More of Photon. Oh, Photon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, Monica Rambo. Oh, Monica yeah. Rambo. Keep- Monica Rambo. She and her mom have like M's in her nick in their names. So yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing her as Photon. I wouldn't mind seeing her as Spectrum. Captain. I mean, she's technically the first Captain Marvel female Captain Marvel, technically, but not in the MCU. Yeah, she has that mantle before Carol ever did. Actually, I think she was the first person that had that name before even Captain Marvel came into the picture. Wow. Yeah, but I know Monica Rambeau as Spectrum. Not as the, because I, when I first came into comics, that's where I knew her as, because she was on the series known as The Ultimates, where The Ultimates were a group of superheroes that dealt with the cosmic uh, problems. Not The Ultimate franchise, whereas The Ultimate Universe, just the group was known as The Ultimates, but she was in that. I want them to bring in, when are they going to bring in Blue Marvel? That's her lover, for God's sakes. When are they going to bring him in? I'm pretty sure they're going to bring him in very soon. 
I hope so, because yeah. I like Blue Marvel. I do too. He's really cool. He's uh yeah. You bring in Blue Marvel, you're gonna bring in the Anti Man? Oh god, yes. Because they both happen at the same time due to their little experimental accident or whatever. So good. But yes, go check out this book. It's five issues long. It's very long, it's very short. It doesn't you don't need to know anything else that's happening in the Marvel universe when it comes to mutants because it's very isolated story. It's not doesn't really affect anything outside of it or take anything outside of this into the book. So it's kind of a standalone except for the quiet council. You might, you might, you might want to know who the quiet council is or Krakoa, but outside that you don't even know anything else. It's a fun little read. And I finally bought myself a copy of it. So I wrote, I read it digitally for the longest time and I'm like, I need to buy a copy. So I got a little bit of money and I'm like, Oh my God. I must have been like 14 bucks. I'm like, give me a physical copy of this shit because this shit deserves to be in my library. Period. <laughs> so, yes, that will end our month of vampires. This was fun. Uh, I love vampires. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to do something different. And we did. We did some vampires. And now maybe we got to have a month of werewolves. We do need a month of werewolves. Like, I, I just can't think of any werewolf movies that I've read. Other than werewolf you know, movies that you've read. Yes. You mean werewolf I books? By, I stand by my <laughs> statement. Stand by your statement. I stand by my words. Well, I'm sure we could find some. We could, we could schedule a werewolf month in the future. And I'm sure we could find some books between now and then to, to plan I, one out. Yeah, you know, I think I've already found something. Um, it's called Wolf Song. Oh, I do have that one on my neck, actually. Do you have it? I yeah, it I by, have it. it's a digital copy. Hold up, let me bring it. You have? Is it uh, by T.J. Clue? Uh, is it okay? Is the cover red? Like in red let? It's like in red lettering. The one I'm looking at is in like a teal and green. It's called Wolf Song by TJ Clune. Okay, let me let me pull out my nook right quick. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Turn her on. <laughs> Sex joke. <laughs> what am I a five year old? Do I have a sense of you? Shut the fuck up. I you're know older. I'm older than you. You're older than me, but you act like a child. Oh, you're one to talk. Your little puns and shit. Here, one more. You know, I never liked puns. I never liked puns, but I am surrounded by people that just throw them at me left and right. I have no. I've done no such thing. Well, let's see. There's my brother. There's my dad. There's Bradley. And there's quite a few other people. I just love throwing them my way. So now it is my life missions to find and just read y'all just the be the worst puns I can think of. You know, the puns. And you myself. brought. You've all brought this on yourself. I didn't bring this on myself. How did I bring this on to myself? Because I'm friends with you? Because I got close to you? Is yeah. that why? Yes. Because you got, you're got you just collateral damage at this point. Oh, wow. Alrighty. What is this book called? Oh, no, it's not that book. But it's called The Werewolf. But where is W-E-H-R? That's okay. Interesting. And it's apparently an Amazon original story. It's an audiobook. <laughs> okay. Um I'm sure we could find werewolf stuff. There's a lot of I mean, gay books. There's werewolves everywhere. Well, okay, so 
let's see, Wolf Song isn't exactly uh, a werewolf novel. Wolf Song is like a shapeshifter novel that they oh, the happen. shapeshifters. Yeah, they turn in. They do turn into wolves. So I guess you can consider them werewolves, but they would be more like the Twilight werewolves. Shapeshifters. Just shapeshifters. Oh. Uh, now I'm thinking about it. Technically, we're not gonna do Twilight. We're not gonna talk about Twilight. We could, but no. That maybe eventually. I thought about doing that for this month, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to put you you guys through that. This is our Halloween themed month, which is why we did vampires. Yeah, and yes. Twilight vampires are not Halloween worthy. Yeah, they're not. So, on that note, I hope everybody has a great Halloween this year, because I know I am. Granted, at the time of recording this, we're in August, but let me tell you, Halloween season starts August 1st, baby. Uh -huh. I'm already ready. I'm waiting for Starbucks to give me my fucking salted caramel mocha. Because if I don't get Starbucks, they're going to hear from me. That's my shit. That's my white girl drink, okay? People are always talking about pumpkin spice. Nah, fuck that shit. I want my salted caramel mocha. Iced. Thank you. I take my iced coffee very seriously here. Because of course. Does that make me a big a big faggot? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Most certainly does. No qualms, no shame here. Nice coffee is life. Who the fuck drinks hot coffee? Ugh. Those are the fucking weirdos, y'all. As I sit here talk to somebody who drinks hot coffee. I drink I feel like hot coffee is better for waking you up in the morning. You want cold coffee, like iced coffee is better throughout the, like later on in the day. That's a good way of thinking. It's a good way of thinking. And I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I drink hot coffee. Sometimes if I'm feeling real, real, like, mm, in a mood, I'll drink coffee black. Ew. I, yes. I, I'm sorry. I know. It's weird, but I have. It's every once in a while when I'm like, you know what? I want I want to drink some coffee that's hot and nothing in it. Maybe nice medium roast. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just talking about werewolves just got me thinking. Uh, about uh girl, control yourself. Bitch, shut up. <laughs> I don't, like, d bitch, get your <laughs> get your head out of the gutter right now, sir. I, I mean, swear. I have real estate in the gutter. So do you. I'm on top of this hill, and I see your I see your mansion over there. You gutter goblin. All right, all right. All right. Okay, so there <laughs> what is are you gonna a, say? No, no. I, I stopped paying attention to you. I'm I'm research. I'm oh. doing research now. Damn. Damn. And we're still recording. You better leave that part in. Oh, I am. <laughs> I'm going to leave it in. Trust. Okay. Stephen King wrote a graphic novel called Cycle of the Werewolf. He wrote a graphic novel since fucking when? Hold up. Uh, since 2019. He did. <gasps> <gasps> oh. My God. So now here I am looking for werewolf novels to read because aside from Wolf Song, which I'm planning on buying, um, I think the only other book that had werewolves in it was The Twilight Saga and The Demonata. But it was not, but they were not werewolf centric. Huh. Which I am now. As I think about it, I'm now ashamed of myself for not actually, for not have bought, I have not read any actual werewolf books aside from Smuck. Uh, aside yet, from Smut? Wow. 
Yeah, yes, you heard it here. I read werewolf smut. Fuck you, off. We, you read werewolf smut? For I've real for real? I've read werewolf smut. I'm not wow. currently reading any. You know, I do need some good smut in my life. Like, there's there were a few that I was reading for a good for a good while, but then like they either I lost track of them or the authors just stopped writing them, and then more authors started writing more and more werewolf smut, and they were all literally the same premise, and I'm like, y'all, this is trash, <laughs> trash. And don't you worry, ladies and gents and others, we are not going to talk about werewolf smut on this podcast. I mean, we could. But we're not. No. Are we? No, we're not. No. Is Jacob going to write his own werewolf smut? He probably has. I have not. Really? I would have thought you would have wrote smut. You seem like the writing smut type. I have not. You read writing smut in secret? In uh, secret, no, I, of course, because you'd probably I die if you did, if someone found it. I don't have the patience for it. Oh, damn. I'm just looking through all my, like, like my collection of books now. I'm just like, like, I've read werewolf stuff. There's got to be werewolf stuff. I mean, oh, I, okay. So, yeah, I stand by my earlier statement. I have read books that had werewolves in them, but they were all not centric on the werewolves. Uh It was either like the Twilight Saga, the Mortal Instruments, the Demonata, books that werewolves just appear in, but they are not the central figures. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was correct there are no books that i currently possess that have werewolves in it so i'm gonna need to rectify that it's gonna be a while though yeah like i'm actually gonna go ahead huh what what are you gonna say Uh, i'm actually i'm actually gonna like uh when after i get off work tomorrow i'm gonna like take some money and buy the kindle edition of wolf song now what you were saying earlier the cycle of the werewolf it's not a graphic novel. It's a novel that has illustrations in it. Oh. And it is by Stephen King. It was released back in the 80s, but a new edition of it got released back in 2019. It's 128 pages. Wow. It's like very little. It's a little book of his. And each chapter is like its own little short story. It looks like it could be good. Anyway. Yes, werewolves will be coming in the near future. Dun dun dun. Huzzah. A woo. <laughs> a woof. A woof. So on that note, thank you guys for listening to today's episode. Catch us next time as we talk about something else. Until then, peace Bye. out, y'all. <laughs>